Hey there! Welcome back to the channel. In today's video, we will focus on the iterative version of the Merge Sword. And this is actually a sequel of the Merge Sword recursive version. And the recursive version is actually easier to understand, so feel free to check that out first if you haven't watched that one. If you're new here, my name is Teresa. I'm a software engineer and on this channel, I mainly post coding tutorials like this one, as well as some casual daily life vlogs. Let's recap a little. So what is a Merge Sword? The idea of a merge sword is basically to divide and conquer, or basically splitting the array into smaller ones and then merge it all up. However, for the iterative version, it's going to be a little different from the recursive version because we are doing it from the bottom up, as you can see here in the animation. Let's start with the pseudocode. What we want to do is to go from bottom up. That means instead of starting from the original array and split them up, we want to start here from the smallest subarray and then merge it all up. We know that the smallest subarray is the array size 1, or basically when they're all individual elements. So to merge it up, we simply merge the two subarray that are next to each other. Let's try writing this down in a more logical way. First, we need a variable that will tell us where we are in the merging process. And we're just going to call this variable size, as in the size of each subarray, and we're going to set it to 1 in the beginning. We're going to have a loop that will increment this size by multiplying it by 2 after each loop. We're multiplying it by 2 because in the first iteration, the subarray is of size 1. Then in the next round, after we've merged the subarray, it's going to be of size 2, 4, 8, and so on. Then inside this loop, what we want to do is to merge each pair of subarrays. So we're going to have a loop that will start from the first pair, move to the second pair, and so on. To do this, we'll just set the variable low to zero, starting from the beginning and increment it by the size of the two subarrays. Then inside this for loop, we're just going to calculate the mid and the high of this chunk and then simply merge them like what we did for the recursive version. Now let's try coding this up. I'm just going to have another function called loop, and it's going to take in an array. Inside here, I'm going to have another variable n set to the length of the array. Now let's set up our variable size. We're going to set it to 1 first as mentioned earlier. Then while size is less than n, we're going to increment size by multiplying it by 2. Now inside this loop, we need another variable that will indicate the start of each pair, or basically the variable low. And we're just going to initialize it to 0. This low is going to repeat until it is less than n minus 1. We're having a minus 1 here because if the array is an odd number, we'll just leave the last element alone since there's no need to sort it. And for this low variable, we're going to increment it by the size of the pair of the group. So low plus equals size times 2. Inside this loop, we're going to calculate the mid and the high of the pair. The mid is going to be low plus size minus 1, and we're doing low plus size here because size is basically the size of each half, so this basically gives us the mid. And we're adding low here to make sure that mid is adjusted after each iteration, and the minus 1 is just to get the middle index. By doing this, there's a possibility that this will give us an index out of error because this could go out of index. So we're just going to get the minimum of this and n minus 1, which is basically the last element. Similarly to the variable high, high is going to be low plus size times 2 minus 1. And we time size by 2 here because size is the size of 1 half. So to get the size of the pair of subarray, we have to times 2 to get the high. And we're going to make sure that it's not giving us any error by getting the minimum value between this and n minus 1. Now, once we have the variable low, mid, and high, we're going to simply merge them up by calling the merge function that we implemented in the recursive version in part 1 of the merge sort algorithm. And that is all for the iterative version. Let's try... I'll just return the array here and test it out.
And here we go, a sorted array. For the merge sort, the time complexity for both best case and the worst case is n log n, just like the recursive version. And again, if you want me to explain where this log n comes from, please comment down below because explaining that is another video in itself. And that is all for me today. If you like this video, check out this playlist of basic algorithms that I've created. See you again next week. Bye!